Um, I'm HM3 Biznar. First time been deployed, first time in a leadership position. Came out here to Afghanistan. Um, things I'm gonna hit on are our training that we received back in the States. Um, we did NTTC, pig lab, uh, MACE exams. We came out here, first trauma patient we got. Um, everything clicked on home. Um, I had never seen a battlefield trauma patient before. The first time we had a double amputee, triple amputee, everyone just ran to their positions and knew exactly what to do. Got the patient out in a timely manner, still alive in most cases. Um, every day we do training in the afternoon uh, with the nurses, doctors, corpsmen, um, training on monitors, equipment, drills, anything from tourniquets on down to chest tubes, which keeps us proficient on our skills as well. Um, being in country, when we actually get a patient, it brings all the training home, everything we've learned back in the States. Um, out here we utilize every day, every time we get a patient, and it really instills confidence in myself and my junior corpsman that we can take care of a patient. And also it instills confidence in the Marines out here, knowing that if one of their own or themselves came in, that we would be able to do our job and save their lives to the best of our ability. Hi, my name's HM2 Amy Housley, and I'm the blood coordinator for Sabit Kadam Shock Trauma Platoon. We've recently did turnover with 3-7 to 1-7. Um, it went flawlessly. Um, I couldn't ask for a better team to be um, to have take over. Actually, um, the corpsmen are wonderful. The surgeon, Lieutenant Beam, has been wonderful. Um, we recently just. Uh, had a preparation for a possible mass casualty with the elections in the Sangin Bazaar. Um, historically, these have been uh, kind of a hotbed for any type of Taliban activity. So what we did in preparation for that is we worked pretty closely with the 1737 BAS corpsmen and 1737 Marines as a whole, as a battalion. Um, what was unique for myself was making sure we had enough blood on hand to handle a mass casualty. Generally, our patients are stationed for max 30 minutes, but with a mass casualty, um, you're looking at a little longer time and a, a lot more patients. So um, we made sure that we had a, a double amount of blood on station, um, which is imperative for any type of IED blast, loss of blood, because let's be honest, people don't die from broken bones, people die from loss of blood. So that's our key here at uh, the STP minus is uh, life-saving interventions quickly. So with blood, packed red blood cells, and fresh frozen plasma, we're able to give that immediately to the patient and sustain them until um, they can get to a higher level of surgical intervention. So bastion, eddy, any place like that. Um, it's been pretty unique as far as I've never handled blood as far as um, as a corpsman, it's usually saved for lab techs, um, far from a lab tech. So it's really neat to just kind of see um, see a patient come in and then throw some four units of packed red blood cells and two FFPs and to see their blood pressure just skyrocket or completely uh, um, change. Lieutenant Commander uh, Kurt Duncan, uh, hometown uh, Boone, North Carolina, uh, stationed at uh, Naval Medical Center Portsmouth, uh, Virginia. Uh, had the opportunity to uh, work with a joint venture with uh, 3-7 and 1-7. Uh, as with any joint operation, you kind of have uh, some misgivings at first. Maybe uh, the key entities aren't going to get along. That was not the case here. It was pretty much a seamless uh, integration with uh, both 3-7 and 1-7 being able to take care of the Marines. It's important for us to, uh, as we received our first casualties uh, with both 3-7 and 1-7, that they uh, were able to trust medical and see what we were capable of doing, which uh, we've proven that we are uh, trained, ready, and uh, willing to take on the task. Uh, when 3-7 uh, first transitioned over to 1-7, we also had a pretty key event here in Sangin, which was the, uh, the public elections. Uh, coupling with the district uh, governor, in addition to uh, key uh, individuals from 3-7 to 1-7, and uh, local medical folks, we were able to formulate a plan in case there was a mass casualty proving again that uh, all uh, moving parts were able to come together in a clear and concise mission. Um, as a spring offensive and casualties increase, uh, the, the trust that our Marines have in our capability to uh, take care of them as well as our, uh, the local nationals, the ANA, the NSEP, as well as the AUP, we've uh, been able to uh, establish a pretty significant medical presence here and uh, as op tempo increases, uh, so will our, uh, our readiness and our willing to help.
Lieutenant Commander Bettina Sauter. I'm originally from Elgin, Illinois. I am currently stationed permanently with Naval Hospital Camp Lejeune. I'm one of the emergency physicians, but I am here deployed with uh, Bravo Surgical Company from uh, 1st uh, Medical Battalion. And we are co-located in the Sangin Valley region with um, and both with 3-7 and with 1-7 now that they have uh, taken over the battle space. Um, as the Marines role has switched from counterinsurgency to the, uh, to the advisory role for the ANSAF forces, uh, we have um, been able to assist in that mission by continuing to work both with the uh, Marine Corps Battalion on station as well as the NSF forces uh, to provide the trauma care they need as they um, prepare to, uh, uh, to turn over uh, the battle space uh, to the Afghan forces. Uh, we've uh, been able to integrate ourselves with uh, both the battalion chain of command uh, while still um, providing our mission of uh, medical support um, through 1st uh, Marine Logistics Group.